Alright, so regardless of if you're making a Battlegrounds or any other combat game, knowing how to make an effective M1 system is something that every single developer should know in my opinion. And to be honest, it's not even really hard to make, and it's not a super long script either. But I can't lie, I struggled making an M1 system several times actually, and so I thought, hmm, maybe I should make a video about this even though it's actually pretty simple. So, if you're just like me and you have only two brain cells left, Lock in, pay attention, because this might just save you a couple of headaches. Wait, 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 actually, before I start, real quick, I want to say that I just launched the pre-sale for my program scripting accelerator, where I'll teach you about everything that I know in Roblox Studio. You'll have several monthly calls with me, and you'll have one massive masterclass at the end of every month, where I'll teach you about a very specific subject of game development live. So you'll be able to ask questions, demand to further explain stuff, etc. And this will only be available for people that are inside the coaching program. These masterclasses will also be saved and re-uploaded to the coaching programs so that members can rewatch it whenever they want. All calls will also be saved and re-uploaded. On top of this, every month a new course will be added. Once we have a couple of members, we will vote on what the first course should be about and also we'll decide what the first masterclass will be about. So if you're interested in that, check the first link in the description. There's a 50% discount for the next two weeks. After those two weeks, the price will double permanently, but if you buy in the next two weeks, the price won't change for you. They said, let's now start the video that you came to watch. So obviously the first thing you gotta do when making an M1 system is make your animations. I made some test animations for me to be able to quickly test the system I'm about to show you. For this system I made 4 M1 animations and stored them inside this animation folder that's inside replicated storage. As you can see, I have them named and numbered. One says M1 with 1 in parentheses, another says M1 with 2 in parentheses, and so on and so forth. It's important for you to name them this way. Name them M1 and then put in parentheses in what position of the M1 combo that animation goes into. I'm probably over explaining myself, but what I just said just means to name the animations in order. Okay, now that we have our animation set up, we'll be setting up the scripts that we'll be coding in. So go to starter character scripts and insert a local script and call it input manager. In this script, we will detect whenever the player clicks with the mouse. Don't worry, I'll explain how that's done in a bit. Inside this input manager script, you can insert another local script and call it M1. This local script will handle the whole animation process of the actual M1 mechanic. And the last thing we gotta do is insert a bandable function in inside the M1 script. If you don't know what bindable functions are, the bindable function object allows you to synchronous, synchronous, um, yeah, f that, I am reading all that anyways. Essentially, what these do is they let you connect two pieces of code from two separate scripts of the same type, meaning either local script to local script or server script to server script. You'll understand what they are once I explain everything, don't worry. And with that, we're finally done setting up everything we need. Alright, so the first script we need to code in is the input manager script. We want the player to M1 every time the player clicks with the mouse, right? So we have to get the mouse, but in order to get the mouse, we need to get the local player. So you go ahead and get the player instance. Through the player instance, you get the local player, meaning like the owner of the local script. And then through the local player, you can get the mouse of the player by doing local player call and get mouse. You also have to get the M1 script that's inside the script and the bindable function that's inside the M1 script. So go ahead and do that too. Then we use the integrated event of the mouse called button down and connect that to a function. And essentially what this does is it detects every time the left click mouse is pressed and then it runs the code that's under it. But the only line of code that this will run is the invoke of the bindable function we got earlier. A lot of people might be confused now. But Lord, yes, aren't you supposed to put the M1 mechanic code here instead? Yes, yes you should. We want the player to M1 every time they click and that's exactly what we've done here. The reason for this is to keep the input manager as short and as clean as possible. I like having a bunch of code for everything in my input manager, I'd rather have separate scripts for what it's supposed to happen. Remember how I said bindable functions connect two codes from different scripts? This right here is pretty much gathering the code that I'll show you now from the M1 script. In the M1 script, whatever's under this line will be what's gonna run when we invoke the bindable function. So all these lines of code that are in here are what's actually gonna run when the code in the input manager reaches this line. Because what we're telling the script via bindable function is to continue running the code in this script. As I said before, here 
is where the actual M1 mechanic will take place. The first thing we obviously got to do is set the variables that we will be using later in code. I got the bindable function so that we can connect this code to the input manager. I got the animations folder that's inside replicated storage. And another thing you will be needing is the player again. Through the player, you get the character. And through the character, you get the humanoid. And through the humanoid, you get the animator. You want the animator because that's what we'll be needing to play the M1 animations inside the player character. Once you have that, you'll want to create the following five variables. And once performed, a variable whose purpose will be to store the amount of M1 once the player has performed since he spawned. I'll explain why this is useful later. Current M1, a variable that will store the position of the M1 combo the character is currently at. For example, if the player has clicked three times in a row, then you'd want it to play the third M1 animation, right? This is what we will use to keep track of what animation is the one that has to play. M1 debounce, a variable that we're going to use for debounce. What debouncing will do here is just check if the player is performing an M1 when he clicks, and if he is, then it won't let him perform another M1 until he finishes the M1 that he's previously doing. Therefore, he won't be able to cancel the M1 mid M1 because we don't want that. So we're going to use this variable for debounce. You might not know what I mean, but just stay with me. Everything will make sense in a second. Combo and cooldown. A variable that's going to tell us how much cooldown you want the M1 combo to have. So like once the player has performed the M1 combo, I mean like the four M1s, how much time needs to pass before he can actually start start another m1 combo and the last variable here is the variable wait before reset which will tell us how much time needs to pass before the m1s reset if the player is not clicking you know how in games if you spend like one second without following up with another m1 next time you m1 your combo goes back to the first m1 this is what this variable will be used for once you have all the variables then you're gonna do the following bindable function dot uninvoke equals function and you're gonna press enter and what this will do is it will tell the script to continue the code of the input manager over here so the script once it reaches this line in the input manager it will jump over here to the script and run the code that's between these two lines inside this the first thing we're gonna do is make the debounce and for that you do if not m1 debounce then and after that you do m1 debounce equals true and what this does is it makes it so whatever code is inside the if statement doesn't run until the variable is equal to false again and we're gonna turn it to false at the end of the if statement once we have everything we want the code to run completely done you can put it now or later once everything's coded it, it really doesn't matter now that we've created the debounce we're going to increase by one and once performed and current m1s remember current m1 will revert back to zero once the full combo is completed or if it doesn't follow up with an m1 but m1s performed won't next we need to get the corresponding animation for the m1 that we're currently at if it's the first time you click then it'll be m1 with one in parentheses but the script doesn't know that so the way you tell it what animation he needs to get is by doing colon find for style in the animations folder and inside the the parentheses you're gonna put m1 space open parentheses then you're gonna concatenate that with the variable current m1 and then you're going to concatenate the variable current m1 with a close parentheses string all of this concatenation process when it's done it will say m1 with one in parentheses or m1 with two in parentheses or m1 with three in parentheses and so on and so forth and this is gonna let you get the animation that you need to get to play in that current m1 the next thing we gotta do is load the animation into the humanoids animator and you do that by doing animator colon load animation and then you put corresponding m1 animation make sure you have that in a variable too so that you can easily play it now so you play it and now before this next part you're gonna make the script wait the length of the animation track minus 0.1 seconds why minus 0.1 seconds because this way it'll let you m1 when the animation is about to end and not when it's fully finished i find this to be a lot smoother in the transition in between each m1 and that's why i put minus 0 0.1 seconds okay now for this next part i need you to pay close attention if you're new to scripting i know you probably don't know what this is but in simple terms task.spawn function tells the script to run whatever goes inside this in parallel to whatever comes behind the task.spawn. So the script will no longer run these lines of code first. These lines of code inside the task.spawn will run at the same time as the lines that follow the end of the task.spawn. Hopefully that makes sense. Why do we do this? We do this so that we can have the code that checks if the M1 needs to be reset every X amount of time run independently. So inside the task.spawn, 
you're going to create a new variable that's going to store whatever the yen was performed variable is equal to at that exact point in time. Then you'll make it wait however much we want it to wait before it checks to see if it needs to reset the M1 combo, but we already have that in a variable, right? So just put the name of the variable right here in the parentheses. And now after the time has passed for it to check, now you'll actually check. The way you do that is by comparing the old M1 performance variable to the actual M1's performed variable. If they're the same, it means that the player hasn't performed another M1, right? Because we increase it by one every time the player M1s. So if it's the same, we set the current M1 to zero so that the next time the player M1s, they start with the first M1 again. And this is what I mean by resetting the M1 combo. And the last thing we're gonna do is just reset the M1 combo if the M1 that the player is doing is the fourth M1 or like the last M1 of the combo. The way you do that is by checking if current M1 is equal to 4 with an if statement and if it is then first of all make it wait the cooldown for the end of the M1 combo this will make sure that that extra cooldown wait is there if the M1 combo ends and then change the current M1 variable back to 0 and that's gonna reset the M1 combo again of course and don't forget to change the debounce variable back to false so that the players can M1 again if you don't do this players won't be able to really M1 ever again after they M1 once so make sure to change the M1 debounce variable back to false at the very end and the last thing we actually have to do is just test this so i'm here in the workspace now and if you do an m1 combo you'll notice that the first combo you ever do lets you spam the m1s but don't worry this is normal this happens because the first time you play an animation in roblox roblox has a bug in which the length of the animation is set to zero and since in the way we used track the length remember then it lets you like kind of like spam it but it just happens the first time you m1 combo after that as you can see i'm m1ing and everything is smooth don't cook my animations i'm not an animator i'm a scripter remember if you want to have me as your scripting teacher you can now by just joining my coaching program scripting accelerator next couple of weeks there's 50 percent discount first link in the description keep leveling up bro be safe and i'll see you when i see you peace